Greetings and welcome back to Factorio. I'm Catherine of Sky and we are playing entry level to Mega Base. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention last time is if you have suggestions of things that you'd like to see in this series or want to see my take on it or whatever, do please drop me a note either in a YouTube comment or um, send me a message on YouTube or in Discord and I will be happy to take your uh, suggestion and, uh, and possibly do it in the series. Um, one other thing is that if you are a new player, remember you can always pause the video um, if it's going too fast for you and build what I've built um, and have a nice screenshot and I'll try to build like screenshot moments <laughs> so to speak so that they're easy to look at and capture. All right next thing is research and I think I forgot to mention how to choose research. Now choosing the actual items is kind of by um, experience or you can use um, what you want or what you need for your factory. Um, one of the things to take into consideration is how much research each of these items costs. Um, these at the top, and you'll see the little science pack potions at the bottom of the icon, these are only requiring red science. These here, like landfill and tool belt and logistics, they require red and green, which are listed here once you click on them. We don't actually have green automated yet, but we will get it very shortly, which I plan to do in this episode. Now, these ones in yellow are ones that you can research right now, but the ones in red basically have prerequisites. So if you click on heavy armor, looks like we need to research steel processing and military science to be able to unlock this one. Um, and basically some people ask me, how do you choose things? Well, the most basic way is you can click on the rocket at the bottom, or you can type in here, You can there's a search bar, rocket, and it'll show you here, and this will show you everything that you need to get to the rocket the fastest way. Um, and it shows what you have researched. I've got automation, but I don't have electronics or military or any of these other things. Um, but that's basically, if you want to get to the rocket the fastest way, that's how to do it. We're not going to get to the rocket the fastest way because we have aliens on this planet. Um, and I think it would be advisable for us to start to research a couple of things like that. For example, turrets are really good. They are far better than trying to shoot stuff with a gun. Do we have... Oh, we don't even have an SMG yet. <laughs> that's pretty rough. Okay, um, in this episode... I would like to have a tiny little starter base that basically makes red and green science automatically. I have been looking at our map and just taking into consideration this shoreline over here. I don't know how big this is. Our, uh, our radars are slowly, slowly scanning the area. But if this goes upward, I, I was going to do the main bus this way, but I think I'm going to go to the left. I think we're going to have um, smelting around here-ish. Um, and we're going to go to the left, but, and that makes this area a particularly good area for a tiny little sort of a, an automated starter base, uh, which I'd like to show you guys how to build and why we build it this way. So, um, let's also go for military science because we want that SMG, SMGs fire bullets much more quickly than regular, like a pistol. So very, very useful to get an SMG. Um, it's fairly necessary. So, um, first we probably need to talk about blueprints. If you press B, or is there a, no, there is, oh, there is. It's a first icon here, blueprint library, or you can press B on the keyboard. Um, and I have a number of blueprints that I like to use. Basically, you can blueprint anything. If I click on new blueprint, it'll give me a little blue square, which I can put on my toolbar. Um, but what you can do is, okay, say I want another one of these assemblies and I don't want to have to do it by hand. You select it, click it. You can change the name here, just uh, test BP. And you can also change the icons as well. So we're just going to call this uh, red science like this. Click the uh, icon and then you can place it down. What this does is it places ghost images um, and then we can just follow it ourselves. Later on, once we get robots, the robots can place the items for us. Um, so to clear these guys, you can right click on these items just to get them out or um, let's place it down again. So we have a lot of mess over here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. You can also go to the blueprint menu and do a deconstruction planner. Now that's a red thingy. And this will basically, anything that's there, will mark it for deconstruction. Now, I could also deconstruct these things if I want my robots to do it later. Or if I want to, say, plan out where I want to get rid of trees. I don't actually want to do this, so I'm going to shift 
select to get them back into working order. Um, it halts all operations when it's X out like that. So if you do it to belts, it will stop the belts. Uh, right, and to clear your hand, I'm just pressing Q and it basically drops the item from my hand and puts it back in the, the spot where it was or the toolbar. And um, if you want to reuse this blueprint, say I don't want these labs anymore, you shift right click on it and then it's clear and, clear and free to use again. Um, you can also, if you want to blueprint one item, like say a radar, just shift left click. And there you go. You don't even have to go through the process of clicking the checkbox or anything like that. Okay, so let's clear that off. Uh, we aren't actually going to use many of those right now. But okay, so we're, what should we get? We should get probably, I don't know. Um, it doesn't really matter what we get, honestly. Um, just so long as we get some of this red research done. Um, so as you have go over time, you will want to save some of your setups. Like I might want to save this lab thing. Um, and let's, let's go ahead and do that right now. We'll just copy this and we'll call this basic red science. Um, uh, and we'll choose, yeah, well, this is actually a good um, thing, an icon, because I want to know that it's really basic. And we'll add this little red science pack and we'll say, okay, I'm going to press B to open my blueprint book and now I can place it in the bottom here and we have, oh, and I, you know what, this is, I always do this. I always forget to um, press enter. You can click the save uh, pencil thingy um, and then it'll give it the name. So you see it has a name now. And if I want to, I can go ahead and put this in a blueprint book. Um, blueprint books are up here. You can just say new blueprint book. Um, and click it into this area and it comes out here. We'll just call this, uh, oh, to open the blueprint book. And this is a very um, interesting and I hope this UI gets changed a little bit. Right click to open it and we can change it and say test BP book. Um, and then that will sort with the rest of mine. So I'll look under T right here to put an item in it, click, left click, and then right click to drop it in the well. Sometimes it drops automatically, sometimes not. You can left click it to drop it in there. And then you can access stuff from there. Uh, you can also import blueprint strings this way. So for example, let's just delete this whole thing. Um, we can, uh, and this is how you share blueprints. I actually have a tutorial on this, but I'll just go over it real quickly. You can, if you wanna share the, your blueprint with others, you right click on it, and it has to be in the in the hot bar or your inventory. It does not work from the blueprint uh, this area for some reason. Um, but anyway, you can click this little export to string icon um, and it'll give you this funny little text and you just say copy and say okay and then you paste it wherever you want. Usually a text file works really well over the internet. Um, but we're going to just try to import a string um, and we're just going to paste this. Control V to paste, import, and guess what we have? We have this blueprint, which we can then put into our game. Right, so um, that was a quick primer on blueprints. I actually have the blueprint that I want to use at the moment, and it's in my early game folder. I find it really useful to name folders for what they, they have in them, and we're going to use a lovely little starter base um, that I have... I have been inspired by Anti-Elites. He's a speedrunner and he made this gorgeous little base um, and I modified it slightly for my own needs. But um, let's see. Yeah, we can put this, maybe put it like right here. No, I don't want it right there. I want it maybe down here. Down here is fine, just fine. Right, so now this gives us a platform for which to build. Um, but don't worry, I am going to explain all of these things and why they are put in this order and all of that. But I, if you don't remember how to build things from scratch, blueprints can be a really nice way to do that. Right. Um, electronics. Yeah. Electronics opens up a ton of different things. So that's a really nice uh, early research to get. Okay. So in preparation for all this, oh, and to delete blueprints, since I'm not going to need these guys anymore, I'm just going to right click and press the trash can icon. Okay. We have belts and we have no stuff. We ran out of iron. Oopsies. Let's go and get iron again. Because we really need to get some um, things organized and 
put into practice here. Do we have enough stuff in here? Not really. Okay, let's go and fill up these chests so these guys can process while we are making stuff. Oh, and I definitely, desperately need more copper. Good lord. Um, this one needs a bunch of copper, and of course the science needs copper as well. How is this going? Um, it's okay. Not great. I feel like I should make one, maybe one more burner miner um, to put on that copper area. Oh, and I have, I have a furnace already. Fantastic. There we go. That's a little bit of material so that we can actually craft the things that we need. Um... Okay, let's just put this. Oh, this is another handy thing. If you press Q while you are hovering over something like this, just press Q, and it is from the picker tool that Nexla made for us. Um, but it's now in the vanilla game, which is fantastic. So um, you can just pick the item you want. It's called, or what is it called? The eyedropper tool, kind of like, you know, in paint programs, they have these things. Um, but it, it helps you get immediately what you want, and it's very efficient. Okay. We, def we need to fuel these guys with some coal. There we go. I'm going to pick up these green chips because, oh, we have 200 green chips. Hurrah. Fantastic. And I want to make a few different items. Do we have, ah, yes, we have splitters. I'm going to make some splitters. I'm going to make some underground belts. And um, we actually don't need to make regular belts because we have a factory doing that for us. And you see how fast they're made that now that I don't have to do all of the little bitty things. Right, so I'm gonna organize my hot bar here just real quick. And uh, I want, I like my splitters to be in the third position. I like undergrounds to be in the second position. Basically, these are in the order I use them. Lots of belts, lots of undergrounds, and lots of splitters. Now, I've made these guys blue by middle clicking on them. You can also choose a regular thing and middle click on that and then choose what you want in there. For example, I'd like to have fast inserters right there. Um, and anytime I get any fast inserters, they will be shuffled into <clears throat> the, the hot bar as opposed to just sitting in inventory. <clears throat> and when these guys deplete, the, they will automatically be refilled from my inventory. So let's get some of these guys out of here because I don't really need them. And I'm going to delete this blueprint book because I don't need that. We have a limited amount of inventory space at the moment. So I'm just going to get stuff that I really want. Let me unclick that area. And <clears throat> I think that's probably good to go. Now, the first thing we're having here is we're going to set up two furnace columns. One of these furnace columns is going to be for copper. Uh, the other one is for iron. And as you can see, the iron one is much, much longer than the copper one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to place down these furnaces here, uh, right by the, <clears throat> the blueprints, right over the blueprints, I should say. And, um, and then we're going to get everything else set up. Let's get, um, we're going to get the input belts first. So these guys, if you see strange inserters or uh, constant combinators here, and basically they're telling you what goes where. So this means that this belt needs to get uh, a copper on it. It does not mean you actually need an inserter there. Okay, let's get this one going this way. And then, and take note of the direction the belts are facing because that's very important. Now this is a splitter and what this is gonna do is split the coal on either line. And, uh, and coal is coming from here, but it doesn't necessarily need to. It just needs to feed into the splitter. Okay, there we go. But when you have these splitter things, they almost always go in opposite directions just as a rule of thumb. Okay, this one goes this way. And we'll run along and put this belt down here. Okay, let's just get this belt organized here. There we go. <clears throat> right, so we're moving to a place where here we are directly feeding from the miners into the furnaces. But here we're going to put ore on the belts so that inserters can give it to the furnaces. So what we can do is um, place these, make sure that the, 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 uh, the direction matches the one you want to go. Or you can use the picker to just Q to place them down like this. Um, if you place them in a square, it tends to be pretty um, efficient. Oh, we need to make more of these inserters. 
Let's just do that. I probably need much more iron. Okay. I'm going to look at science and see, is there anything that we really need? Automation two would be amazing. Let's get automation two. Because without automation two, we can't build some complicated items. Um, so that's pretty important. Okay. This one needs copper. All right, I'll go grab some copper. I should have built more of these copper things just to have enough. So, you know, when you walk away, it just makes stuff. That would have been a better, a better idea, I think, instead of what I did. So see, even now I'm still like learning new things about the game. Um, that's one thing I absolutely adore about Factorio is there's always something new to learn. All right, so we have made some more of these inserters. Um, another thing you can do is if you want to check how many items something needs, you can look right at the bottom of the blueprint and it tells you need 151 inserters. Um, we're not going to need that much right now um, because a lot of them are going to be for labs and stuff, but um, we're just going to make what we can and, and, uh, and hopefully have enough. I hope we'll have enough. We'll see. Uh, right, so let's make some more of these guys. And we'll go to the other side and get things going on there. Oopsies. There we go. Okay, yeah. Sometimes my my skill is not exactly <laughs> apparent here. Um, and then we'll put down these power poles here. Get these all kind of in line. I try when I do blueprints. Um, I try to make them as efficient as possible, like the least number of power poles, that kind of thing. So, anyway, that's why things are the way they are in my blueprints. But um, here we go. So now we have got the power poles aligned for all of these furnaces. First thing I want to do is connect that upward. Remember, we can click and drag to uh, just get these poles. Um, nicely spaced from each other. Okay. Um, right. We need to start feeding this with stuff. And I think I'd like to start with coal. Now we need to get something called an electric mining drill, which we actually made some before, uh, with the other, um, in the other episode it's to feed our uh, electricity supply. We can check on that in fact, and see where things are going. Okay. We have tons and tons of coal. It is backed up on the belt. And by the way, if it's backed up, that's a good thing. It means that you have enough. If it's not backed up, then you have to worry. You don't need to, I I've had a couple of people ask me, is that, you know, Oh my God, what do I do? It's backing up. It's an emergency. No, no, no. It's a good thing when it backs up. That means that you have plenty of production and the miners do shut themselves off after a time. Looks like we haven't found any biters yet, which makes me happy to no end, <laughs> but we will get there. Right. <clears throat> so the first thing um, we're going to do is we're going to tap into some of this coal and um, let's see. This is actually a decent spot here. Now, when I place this, if you notice on the right hand panel, it shows you what resources it can obtain by being placed in a certain spot. We absolutely do not want to place it over iron um, because <laughs> it'll give us a random assortment of iron or coal when it outputs. We want to have pure resources. Um, later on, we might uh, decide to, um, to, to, to tap into like a, a mixed area, but not right now. We will do sorting later. Okay. So here we go. Now this, this arrangement here is just, I had it in another game. It had to go underneath. So I'm just going to delete this. We just know that coal goes into this splitter. Now I'm not terribly bothered about all of this coal being on one side, um, because it's going to split and also go on one side. Um, but if we really wanted to, we could balance this out by putting a, uh, a splitter in here um, and then saying, uh, well, not saying, but placing the belts like such. Uh, basically what this does is this is a true splitter where it will say, okay, half of the stuff goes on one side, half on the other, and then it recombines in the middle belt and you get an absolutely equitable distribution of stuffs. Now you could do another design, which, um, let me show you, which is not a good design, by the way. I see a lot of people doing um, 
uh, like this kind of thing. We'll do it this way. Um, and this will work um, as long as it's all on the left side. But as soon as you put even one of these guys on the other side, this goes to pieces because all of a sudden it is not, it's going to have too many on one side of the belt. So do avoid doing these guys um, unless you are absolutely sure of what you're doing. But otherwise, if you have anything going on both sides of the belt, this does not work at all. So we're going to just change that back to a proper splitter for this or proper balancer, I should say. This is what's known as a lane balancer. Okay, there we are. And we'll take this one off because we don't actually need it at the moment. We have plenty of production. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> right. So that's going to get uh, sorted out there. Let's go up here and grab the coal from here and keep on feeding these guys as long as we need them. And I also want to grab some of this. So I'm just I'm clicking the wrong button and I'm getting only half when I should be getting the whole thing. All right, we now have coal being fed onto here. And if you look closely, the way this is designed is that it will only feed on half of the belt. This is very, very important um, because we're gonna need to have the other half of the belt have the, um, the ore on the other side. So let's get um, some copper from here. We can go ahead and just make this a straight belt. We don't really need that to be there. And uh, I want to get this going from here. Um, okay, let's see how many machines we need. Okay, so for every two of these, we need one electric miner to feed this to capacity. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Um, so let's just call that twelve. So we need six to basically saturate um, the the copper production for here. Okay, we'll do this. One, two, three, and then we'll feed on the other side as well. There we go. We'll just take that down. Um, but for now, let's also go ahead and bring the power over. Oopsie, no. Okay, there we go. Very nice. And we'll take this this way. Nope. What is this lag thing about? I don't even know. So this technically should be enough to feed this. We need to do the same with the iron. We have a lot more on iron. Uh, there's an easy way to count stuff, however. You can get your blueprint planner or a deconstruction planner and basically just pull the, the, the square over the thing and you say, aha, we have 22 of these guys. So that means we need 11 miners on iron. Right, so let's go ahead and use this. Get our belts over here and eh, I'll just go ahead and put down our miners first. So, oh, do we, we don't have any. So we'll do five, 10, uh, well, a bunch. We'll just do a bunch. And hopefully get that sorted out. Um, right, these guys need more iron. No, iron is short. I like to have stuff happening. Gotta have belts made, things, stuff, all the things and all the stuff. Okay, this needs a bunch of copper. And this needs we need iron, much iron needed. So, oh, we don't actually have much in here. There we go. And that'll keep making belts for us. And you can never have too many belts. Definitely not. Because in later game, these can all be recycled into higher level belts as well. So that's another benefit of, um, of things. Um, okay, now we can start putting down our miners. We need 11 of them, I think we, we said. How do we want to arrange this? I tend to like to go in like vertical lines, so we can try this. Let's get rid of some of these because we won't actually be needing them anymore. Okay, we'll leave a couple just because they're handy over there. Now, notice with the AOE of this guy, it will actually reach under these belts. So that's a good thing. All right, we can have one there. Uh, wow, this is, oh, this is, <laughs> this is allowing it to be placed because this square is underneath, but it only will get 713 resources. I think that's a waste of a miner. Uh, this is 1.4K, this is 4.7. Yeah, we can leave these this way. That'll be fine. Um, and then we'll do the other side. We needed 11, this is four. 
Uh, right. Let's go make sure this is not overlapping coal. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eh. And the other one should be on the other side, but it doesn't actually matter because we only need one side filled. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, ugh. Okay, well, we can... We can do something sort of on the sneaky side. Basically just do this. Make sure it's not on the coal. For some reason, map generation um, in... Uh, whoopsies. In 0 0.15 is making a lot of these, like, mixed patches butting up against each other. Like, normally this was not the case. But here, it's all, all over the place where they're just, like, climbing over each other. No biters in sight yet. This is good. But look at our pollution. We are already generating lots of pollution that's going to go out of our radar range very shortly. And that's a dangerous situation to be in because um, the biters the biters are out there somewhere. <laughs> right. So one cool thing that you can do with power poles is um, if you click and drag them, they will automatically go in range of anything that needs power. So we're just going to click and drag here and make sure that we can get some of these guys. There we go. Yep, perfect. I didn't even let go of the mouse button the whole time. Okay, fantastic. Now let's... Uh, oopsies. Oh yeah, this is right. This is right. I thought we missed it. Right. So now um, the iron ore is going to go on that one. And we are going to get our smelting working. As you can see, these guys have been smelting the copper. Um, the They're already starting to fill up uh, because there's no space on the belts left, unfortunately. Um, let's see how automation is doing. We definitely need automation too. Okay, it's just slow. Are you happy? Yes, you're happy. How much is in here? 26 plates. That one has 61. We just give a little bit more to there. And I mean, this one needs more iron. No, it doesn't. It's okay. Iron is fine. Uh, these guys need more iron, though. You can never have too much iron. Right. Oopsies. Let's get out of here. And pick up a little bit more iron there. But soon we won't even need to do this. Okay, um, right, automation two is done. Um, let's do stone walls because those are a defensive measure that we'll get to. And here we go. Uh, this is working absolutely perfectly. As you can see, the copper is making it to the end of the line, which means we have our ratios correct. Um, and then let's look at the iron. Okay, it looks like it's not making it just to the end, but it may be because these guys have stocked up a little bit. Okay. Um, I do want to make some of these guys. Oh, and I need iron plates. Oh, gee, what am I to do? Let's raid these guys. Or if you wanted to, you could press, you could walk on the belt and press F to pick stuff up like that. Uh, very handy way of doing stuff. Um, I also want to make, I want to make a bunch of these blue machines because blue machines are so handy. I could also stand to make some iron chests, I think. Make like five of them. We may need more inserters as well. Okay, um, I think we'll go for bullet damage. That's always a nice thing. Oh, and we should make an SMG. <laughs> SMG, good. Yes, we need we need an SMG. Let's just raid these these iron making things. And I want to build a, an SMG as as soon as this guy is done. Now, one thing that is amazingly awesome, and thank you so much to the mod creator, is the, um, what the heck is it called? I've forgotten the name of the mod already. It's called Ghost Copier. Thank you so much. Um, when you put these guys down, normally in vanilla, it would erase the recipe, but with Ghost Copier, boom, it's already copied. This is fantastic. This is like the mod we've all been waiting for. Absolutely wondrous. Thank you so very much for making it. Um, right, so then let's put in our inserters to get things moved along here. And we want to make sure we have enough inserters for each process um, so that it gets transferred appropriately. Take care to look at the directions of these inserters between machines because they're quite um, important. Right, these go that way. And then we're going to need um, a fast inserter. And maybe five and maybe ten. 
See how when I crafted, they went directly to my toolbar? I love that. Uh, right, so these guys go there. Um, and we can put in power poles here. Basically all the spots that need them. And then we'll do our next uh, rows of inserters in just a second. All right, let's make some more. We need more iron, so raid the iron. We See, after you build a small set, setup like this, you no longer need to even go back to your burners. It's just not even necessary. Okay, and these guys are actually full up. They have tons of product. And why are they not making more? Because they have nowhere to output it. So we need to make a spot, a plot spot. Oh my goodness, my speaking is not working. Um, to, to collect these things. Um, this one basically would transfer to the inserters, but again, there's no spot to put stuff. So I'm gonna put two chests there and two here. Um, basically because these guys make faster than one inserter can handle. Um, so if you don't want to use fast inserters, you could use regular inserters, say, for example, if you don't have the research. Of course, we have already done the research, so um, that's kind of, you know, in fact, we should probably do that that way. We should just put fast inserters there instead. So we'll replace this one with a fast inserter and this one as well. Okay, get rid of these guys. It'll just save us on inserters. Um, I want to do a power pole there and make sure you set limits on these boxes. Um, for belts, I think I probably want like a bunch, maybe like that much. Um, you just click the red X and move it over. And basically you, you can put stuff in these slots, but the machine cannot go past the red area. And the same with inserters. I like to have like maybe one stack being made for a single player game at a time. Um, and then these guys will get made when they're not needed um, by these guys. All right, I think this is probably far enough for this particular episode. We will set up the science in the next one. And as always, um, a lot of these blueprints are in my Google Drive, which is linked in the description below. Um, and as in the beginning of the series, remember that um, if, you, if there are particular things you want to see, do let me know, drop me a message, and I will try to include them. So thank you so very much for joining me. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time.